Hello, everybody. Uh, you're here this afternoon with us and Dr. Nafisa. And uh, I am so excited today about today's topic because I know a lot of you struggle with chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, and we're going to do a really deep dive into some of the mechanisms behind that. You're going to find some really fascinating information from Dr. Nafisa today um, that her uh, practice, Gordon Medical Associates, with, was actually instrumental in some of the research behind. So stay tuned for that. Because it is definitely the hardest, most complex form of medicine. Um, I'm sure you agree. I love it. And I know you do too. Like I love the complexity. I always say the more complex, the better, but it's really, really difficult sometimes. And these are not, these are the cases that the most of the conventional doctors don't want to see sadly. So it's good that you and I, you know, are, are welcoming them to our practice. Um, so you've had such a great experience with some amazing medical partners. Um, you were with Dr. Klinghardt originally. Was that right after you graduated? Yeah, right after I graduated. Excellent. Fantastic. You probably got a little bit of good in, information on Lyme and co-infections and, and all of that there. And he's yeah. so good at some of the environmental toxicity and the, the stuff that's on the cutting edge. I always feel like the Europeans are way ahead of us. And because he's originally from Europe, he I, I love his perspective. He's not jaded like our many, right? <laughs> Right, exactly. So it was really wonderful. That's where I first learned, you know, right after school, really how to, how to work with this population about the tick-borne illnesses and mold and, and detoxification therapies. And then, and then from there, I really made it my own. Yeah. So, yeah. So you probably really, um, was there anything in particular with that experience that you learned as far as how to approach a chronic infection or, fi well, first of all, we're talking about chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. So say you had a patient fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue from your early days, was there anything that sticks in your mind about lessons that you learned about how to approach them? Absolutely. So the first was to detoxify them first. So to, to find out what the toxic burden is. So testing through different labs, so looking at different heavy metals or um, different chemicals, glyphosate, different pesticides and understanding what that burden is because if we detoxify them first, then, then we can get the immune system to be more modified, we can we can get it to, to be more able to handle the killing of infections. So. What a great pearl. And for those of you listening, you've probably been to doctors or like, oh, let's start these antibiotics. But what you're saying, which I've seen that as well, it's like the body of its toxic load, if its bucket is full, and that's usually the ones that are coming to see us because some of that pain and fibromyalgia types of stuff, again, we'll go deep into why that happens and some of the reasons behind it is from the toxic burden in the tissues, right? So if you yeah. take a person like that, they have infections that need treating, but you throw these, even herbal antibiotics, but for sure uh, medications, it's too much for their system to handle, isn't it? Right. They'll actually backfire. A lot of times they've got this hyperactivity in the immune system on, on one hand, They've got a hyperactive immune system, and on another hand of the immune system, it's it, it's it's too weak to even mount an appropriate immune response. So many times, if we try to treat them with the antibiotics, herbal or pharmaceutical first, they'll be sensitive to those treatments. So we have yes. to decrease the toxic load, get the mast cells in order first, and then they can. I have love that order because it's so important. I've I've noticed that with my own practice as well, where again, if there's infection and toxin and mast cell activation, which is a common, you know, trio and chronic yeah. fatigue and fibromyalgia, and you really can't go to treatment until you start with getting that mast cells calmed down and the detoxification at least under control. Um, what are some of the things when they first come in like that? Would you what kind of testing panels would you do for the initial assessment? Yeah. So I like to do the Great Plains mm -hmm. panel where I'm gonna look at their glyphosate, mycotoxins. Most of, them have, of my patients do have a high mycotoxin load and also um, their tox panel while I'm looking at a lot of chemicals. I'll also do the doctor's data heavy metal provocation, but I'm also gonna look at metals unprovoked first, just from LabCorp, just urinate in a cup or have their blood taken at LabCorp looking for the ones that LabCorp will look at like mercury, lead, aluminum, arsenic by the way i'm seeing a lot of arsenic yes in me people's too. blood and i think that's from the fires it's not something i saw in previous years it's all of a sudden this year whoa lots of arsenic i bet you're right i, I suspect with the fires there's definitely a lot of metals that were released mm -hmm. and i'm seeing more and more aluminum in all of my patients me too. To yes yeah which I didn't see, and isn't it? And I'm like, where else is it coming from? Because we know like vaccinations over time can be a source, aluminum cookware. Um, what are some other sources of aluminum that you think of when you see aluminum? Is there anything else that you think of? 
you know, I recently, I had um, a drummer. Uh I have a drummer in my practice and and he drummed barefoot and there was aluminum on the pedal. Wow. And and his aluminum was through the roof. I just measured it. So. (laughs) Wow. That's so, that's so fascinating. Isn't it funny when you find one of those where you're like, oh, I think this is from this. (laughs) (laughs) And arsenic too. And I think it's more in the rainwater, but probably from the fires and then the rain and the soils and yeah. So, um, wow. Very good. Um, and then one thing we, we kind of glossed over, we talked about, um, you know, like how you got into this medicine, but, um, is there anything else that interests you about this population? I mean, we talked a little bit about the helping the healer within you, but because again, this is a population that is, um, very complex, <laughs> and, but you must love to solve problems. Is that one of your, love, I love to solve problems. I love to solve human Problem. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Right. Not the smart <laughs> stuff or the <laughs> Not an engineer yeah. or an accountant, yeah. but the right. human, you know, yeah. and, but it is, it's, it's very much a mystery. It's very much a, a, a puzzle and each person is their own mystery. So while I run the same labs for everybody, I'm going to find different pieces and, and one person will react very differently than another um, to treatment or from the same exposure. A lot of that has to do with the genes so speaking of labs, I like to I like to use the Intellix DNA um, mm-hmm. lab. So I found that they really looked at how the SNPs will interact with one another, as opposed to just here's a SNP or right. there's a SNP. They'll look at them together, and they really uh, called the research to look at what what diseases are related to to which um, genes that they're acting in symphony with one another. So it's it's expensive. Oh, this is great. I just started doing this. I have a couple patients pending. I did it on myself, and it's pending. Yeah. And I've got Sharon coming on, so stay tuned for the show because in hey. about a month, I've got Sharon <laughs> on, and I'm so excited because we'll have her talk about that. She's the expert, the medical director of Intellix DNA. Yeah. So yeah. I love that you're using that because I find mm-hmm. there's so many genetic tests out there, aren't there? Yeah, I and found this one. This one is the most informative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. Um, so say you have someone, uh, and again, we're going to get to fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue in a moment in the cell danger response, which I didn't want you to talk about. But before we go there, say you do have someone with arsenic or metals, or um, so say they have some, a little bit of uh, mass cell activation, they have chronic pain and chronic infection and toxic burden and all these things. If you do find metals, are you going to do that early on detoxification? Are you going to do maybe some treatment? Where would you order that in, in mm-hmm. your treatment plan? I think it depends on the person, but most of my patients, I, I have to treat mast cell activation syndrome first. Usually they come to me with that. They don't even know they have it. So I just want to calm down the immune system. That's that's the hyperactivity mm-hmm. the immune system that I want to calm down. I'll use peptide therapies very often with that. I, I like to use thymus and beta-4 yes. to help calm down the immune system. I'll use BPC-157 as well to help with um, decreasing inflammation. I'll give them sleep peptides um, when they need to sleep before they're even ready to detox. Sometimes they're constipated. So yeah. I need to deal with the constipation yeah. before they're ready to detox or else there'll just be a backlog of, mm-hmm. of toxicants that, that aren't exiting the system. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes they, they have issues with their kidneys. Mm-hmm. So we have to work with that. So often with these patients, I'm calming down their immune system while I'm working with other systems that aren't quite ready for detox. I'm doing like a, a pre-tox for them, like yeah. herbs to support, right. right? And then I'll retest some labs, see where they're at, and also see where they're at with the way they're feeling. And then we'll begin chelation therapy. That's tremendous. And I always admire some of my best learnings are from my naturopathic friends, because I feel like you guys have such a great training in some of those detox um, what's the name of for, from naturopathic medicine of the detox pathways? Is there a name? The Amuncturies. Yeah, I like <laughs> that time because I mean I've learned that over time, right? Yeah. Now, but like traditional allopathic medicine, we're not taught about this. No. <laughs> which yeah. is sad, which is why most doctors, you know, unless they go at ed- extra education, um, they don't even know. Like I feel like you guys have a lot to teach us in this in this way. So tremendous. Um, what are the things would you do? Because we know, you know, some of the homeopathic remedies or drainage remedies or things. What about non-herbal, non-homeopathics, like other, like maybe Epsom salt baths or alkaline water? Do you have any sort of just environmental or lifestyle things that are good for detox that you like for most of your patients? Yeah, most of them actually do well with coffee enemas. Mm-hmm. As strange as that sounds. You can actually no, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> it helps them helps their liver to to continue you know, um, de- uh, detoxifying, yeah. and, um, you know, 
saunas, I think, are really important, or at least getting the sweat going because the, the skin is the largest organ of detoxification. Um, and of course, making sure that they're not using products that mm -hmm. have chemicals and yeah. toxins in them, that they're eating organic as much as they possibly can. Fantastic. Yeah. And do you do uh, castor oil packs or dry brushing yeah. or some of those? Yes. Yes. Castor oil packs, dry brushing, oil pulling. So yeah. Some, uh, I'll use a combination of um, a very classic naturopathic techniques along with, with this patient population. I have to use a lot of medications. Yeah. As well. Yeah. It's, Definitely. It's, Especially with the MCAS, you really sometimes need to layer four, five, six things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it turns out, you know, when I went to naturopathic school, these were the treatments that were that were taught to us and, and they're wonderful for for the population that's not extremely sick yes, yes. And, they're, and and for the people that are extremely sick they're excellent supportive and I consider them foundational but then I have to go into um stronger right right I love it though because we're like pulling from both worlds because I like yeah. learn from the homeopathic naturopathic world and then but we still need medications of course on both ends so that's